third world at Discovery Canada. There you are, the Discovery Channel. I'm Jay Ingram. And I'm Judy Halliday. Welcome to the very first edition of At Discovery Canada. I know right now you're wondering, what is At Discovery Canada? This is the first nightly magazine show ever, anywhere in the world, to focus on science, the environment, nature, and technology. We even promise a dash of adventure and a few laughs along the way. Judy is a humorist. <laughs> oh, that's news to me. You'll see documentaries, regular columnists, even puzzles. And we want you to get involved in the program, too. Your comments will be important in shaping what we do and how we do it. Tonight's program is a pretty good sample of what we hope to offer you over this coming season. We'll visit Georges Brassard and get a close look at some of his favorite things. If you can figure out the shape of a falling raindrop, then you're ready for the Discovery Quiz. And I will even later on don some virtual trunks this I gotta and, see. and go underwater with these virtual fish you see behind me and learn something new and important about artificial intelligence along the way. We begin tonight by looking into the future. All week we'll be peering around the corner into the coming millennium and do our best to see what's ahead for science, technology and the environment. We begin by hearing from two people who have been thinking hard about what tomorrow may bring. For millions of science fiction fans, this is one vision of the future. Sure, there are galactic battles, but it's the seamless technology, the gleaming ships, and the idealism of Star Trek that have shaped the way a whole generation looks toward the next millennium. But Star Trek is just one vision of the future. There are bleaker ones. Films such as Mad Max see society breaking down. It's a world where the only law is the law of the gun. Many futurists believe the reality is somewhere in between. Derek DeKirchhoff is director of the McLuhan Program for Culture and Technology at the University of Toronto. And Alan Gregg is the former head of the influential polling firm Decima Research. He's now with the entertainment giant Viacom. So what's your vision for the future? Is it something black and bleak like this landscape? or? or something phenomenal, like a Star Trek movie? Well, honesty would probably cause me to say I have no idea what whatsoever. I mean, it would be wonderful if the future was highly predictable and, and preordained, uh, but it isn't. I mean, if you take a step back, you can, you can see that. You don't have to be a social scientist. You just have to be kind of a realist. So what forces do you see that would be shaping our Well, I think that the future. biggest one at the micro level, in terms of how people are feeling, is, uh, is that we're, we're in a transition period right now, is that we went through a period since, well, really since the entire Second World War, where people always believed that progress was normal. That and if you good. worked hard, absolutely, yes, it both of those things. Yeah. That, yes, that, that no one ever questioned whether progress was desirable or not, but that also w whether it was not inevitable. And so you were told that if you worked hard and put your mind to it, you can be anything you wanted. A good education was the key to success. Uh, you know, that there are no huge barriers uh, that stand between classes, for example. So this is causing, a, there's a certain trauma of transition that people are going through, and there's been no kind of replacement culture. There's been no new ethos or, or strong compass that people can, can follow. So what's, say, what's uh, that going to do for us in, in the millennium, that lack of ethos, a lack of like a founding principle? Well, what's I think what, what you're seeing that? is that you're seeing searching, you're seeing questing. I mean, it's very interesting. So we're rudder, rudderless and we're looking for somebody to actually give us a rudder and, and take hold of the helm. Quite possibly. The very same condition that would cause that sets the stage for the strong man with the strong plan, who says, I have the way. This is what we should do right now. And so maybe that is what we will see. Maybe what we will see is we will see a true leader of the Magda Churchillian kind of, that will, will not simply 
have a vision, but will forge a consensus where none exists today, because that's why the atomism or the inward turning is, 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 is to, to cybernauts. And all of a sudden, rather than wanting a 98.6 degree shower, which is what we're looking for from our, our screens, is that we're going to want information, that we're going to be seeking out people to, to uh, interface with. And that, that is just not very, very likely. So you don't think there's going to be an information superhighway? Well, I think people have talked about the internet being the information superhighway. It's probably closer to the information dirt road uh, right now. <laughs> is that it's a pretty, uh, you know, base kind of communication system. I think the biggest challenge to the information highway in, in the future is going to be actual content. Uh, you know, we'll have a 500 channel universe if you want to watch share infomercials for mm -hmm. hours upon hours or days upon days. But the fact of the matter is if you're going to expose people to 10 times the kind of options they have right now, uh, you either have to find 10 times more advertising dollars or ask consumers to pay 10 times more for the service than they're paying right now. Neither of those are going to happen. So there's going to be a crisis in, in content, first and foremost. Secondly, I think that uh, even a larger impediment to the information highway of the future is that, is that people aren't going to change from being fairly passive receivers of information all of a sudden like that to active and aggressor seekers of information. And the information highway assumes that that's what we're going to want to do, that we're going to want to, after a hard day of work, we want to get on the information highway and really do some surfing. Well, it just, it just isn't, isn't, going to, isn't going to happen. Looking at what the, what the existence of the Internet has done so far, mm -hmm. what can one say about its, its potential future impact? I don't know yet because we are looking at, uh, in every media, that has ever taken a serious grip on reality. Mm. Uh, there has always been several stages of development. If you have a net of, 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 of thinking and processing information all over the globe, the globe becomes unified. That's ecological, that's fundamental. So do you see that, uh, Derek, as a positive thing, that the internet is pulling oh, us together? Oh, very much positive, Ab absolutely. I, I see it all the more positive that it is not something that is being imposed to us from the top down that in fact is a grassroots phenomenon which grows on its own almost uh, as You're seeing upper income earners increasingly satiated with what has been kind of an unbridled quest for more material goods. Just saying, look, you know, I used to want to work 60 hours a week to get that BMW. Now it's not all that important. I'd rather have that four-wheel drive job and spend some time cocooning. And lower income earners increasingly appear to be fatigued with the same quest. They're saying, I'm never going to get a BMW. Right. So someone better fix the health care system or the education system. So the next generation can have opportunities that are being denied, denied to me. And so I think there will be more and more selling going on and that it will find a less and less uh, receptive audience. Where is the money going to come from? Because many of the younger generation won't have jobs because we're filling them all up. I don't think it's inconceivable that you could see a situation where that parents will literally start abdicating their positions and their jobs. What do you mean, I'm going to give for, up a job for my kids? Abs absolutely. I don't think it's, uh, it's unforeseen. Or I think people who, again, are, are in businesses will, will say, you know, maybe I'll take, give, give Junior here 25% of the salary. I'll take 75 and we'll work on a sliding scale uh, over time. I think Sure, the personal computer may be more powerful, but what exactly will we be doing with it? Probably a lot of us will be surfing the internet. So every Monday and Thursday, we will ask Kate Holloway to be our guide on the oceans of information contained on the net. She runs an internet consulting firm in Toronto, and she's up here at her computer in the corner of our studio. Hi. Hi, Judy. How are you? I'm well. So you are a cyber surfer. I guess you could call it that. How often do you surf the, the internet? I'm online for an average of about an hour and a half a day. What do you do all that time? That's a lot of time. Well, I spend a lot of that time answering my electronic mail, my email. I, I send and receive a lot of that. And I read news. And I, I surf the web. And I go on internet relay chat, talk to people who I've never met before. That's one of the neat things you were, you were saying earlier when we yeah. were talking earlier about it, right? The relay chat. That means that I could get on and talk to anybody I wanted? Anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. There are several channels on Internet Relay Chat, about 100. It depends on how many people are on at a given time. And there are about 8,000 users. And they move Worldwide? From, that's right. They can be from anywhere in the world that has Internet access. 
and they can join and leave channels as they surf through IRC, as we call it. So we're going to do one right now? We can show it right now. Okay. Yes. Let's go. Right now we're on Channel England. Okay. Now Channel England isn't necessarily Eng England, and the people on the channel aren't necessarily all English, but it's a good bet that a significant number of them are. So I'd, I'd be able to ask them, say, you know, if I'm coming to England next summer, what's the best pub to eat at? Sure. Okay. We can ask them. Would all you right. like to do that now? Yeah, I would. Okay. Now all of the people who are on there may not be English. They might be surfing also from other countries. A lot of them probably are asking questions or interested in all things English, much like we are right now, and they would just be on that channel because they like to hang out with Brits. <laughs> so you could get, like, I guess, history and, and that kind of stuff? Yes, you could ask people trivia questions or history questions about their country or practice a language that you might be learning that they may be speaking. Oh, I would like that. I'm trying to learn Italian. That would be wonderful. I could get on the Italian channel. Okay, you just put it in. What's a good pub near didn't... London? What's a good pub near London? Anybody going to answer? Probably. How long does it take for an answer usually? It depends on how fast people can type. <laughs> as well as um, how, how high speed their link is. If they have a slow link up to the internet, then it may, t may, may take longer for what they're typing to come to the channel. Do you mean by link up the modem that you use for the, the internet? The modem and the system that they're dialing into may be slow as well. And if they're far away, for example, England is over the Atlantic Ocean, then depending on how their signal zigzags through the internet, it may be slower for them. Now, what's the signal being carried on? Just phone lines? Phone lines, satellite, the carriers vary. It's not just the phone line. The information reroutes itself according to which carrier is most convenient. Now, if you look here, someone's answered us. Okay. A character by the name of Lord Snooty <laughs> said, a good pub near London would be the sun in Chauvin Village. Oh, that's great. And he's answered us. Oh, so I could and go all over the world just by on the internet. You can ask people about tourist attractions and history and cultural differences and things like that. Oh, great. And just information that you want to know about something that's far away and you need it fast. Now, Mind you, you can't necessarily be sure of what, whether the information is true or not, but it's still a great place to start. Well, thank you. And you'll be back on Thursday to show us even more. That's right. And some of the internet will actually see pictures and stuff like that. Actually, we want the internet to be your link to us. So if you have any comments or questions or anything to say at all, please send your email to comments at discovery.ca. And if you don't remember the address, it's easy. It's the title of our